Welcome to NYNJPA Weather, your weather source for the northern mid-Atlantic. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. The calendar this morning may say March 3rd, but it feels more like February 3rd, with temperatures in the teens and 20s throughout much of the northern mid-Atlantic, and winds ranging anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour, producing wind chills around 5 below to 5 above. Not exactly a very comfortable morning to be outdoors. The good news is that this cold air mass will not last long over the northern mid-Atlantic. High pressure currently sitting over the Great Lakes will slowly move towards the New England coast by tomorrow morning, producing a southerly to southeasterly flow off the Atlantic Ocean, producing warmer temperatures by tomorrow afternoon. However, for today, we're going to have to feel like we're in the middle of winter with temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 30s for many locations throughout the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area. The one positive is that at least it won't be raining or snowing, with skies generally remaining clear throughout much of the region. High pressure again will move off the New England coast by tomorrow morning and remain in control through at least Saturday evening, producing scattered to variable cloud cover as more moisture moves into the region from the Atlantic, but also warmer conditions where temperatures will rebound to near normal by tomorrow in the lower to mid 40s and slightly above normal for this weekend temp with temperatures in the upper 40s to mid 50s. So we definitely approve we have one more one day of cold conditions and then we return to near normal conditions once again with warmer air moving in from the Atlantic. Of course, all eyes are on the potential rainstorm for Sunday afternoon through Monday morning. Now, this is the European model guidance uh, at 500 millibars from the Penn State E-Wall. And what I want to point out here is that uh, as we are getting closer to this storm, the upper level dynamics of this storm are looking less and less impressive. Notice that we have no blocking in the North Atlantic. In fact, we have a nice ridge over uh, much of the Northwestern Atlantic. That means we are dealing with a progressive pattern with a storm track that is more likely going to be towards central New York or the eastern Great Lakes than anywhere along the coast. And a lot of the model guys are starting to lose the idea of a secondary low pressure system developing off the New Jersey and uh, Mid Atlantic coast, mostly because of the upper level pattern that's evolving. What we clearly have here is what's called a positive NAO, positive Arctic Oscillation pattern which basically means the storm track is further north and west, and we can expect generally periods of heavy rainfall with this type of storm, but nothing that's over the top. And I think that the severe threat for this storm is significantly diminished, which I'll explain why in the premium discussions for the severe weather analysis for premium members. So with this upper level pattern in place, at the surface what you end up with is a fast moving area low pressure. This is on a Sunday evening. And this low pressure system, again, probably moved more towards central New York. I'm going a little bit further east than what we have here with the, with the uh, European model guidance. But the cold front is going to move rather quickly as well, um, relative to what we were seeing in previous model guidance. So what I'm looking at here is a period of moderate to heavy rainfall Sunday afternoon on through early Monday morning. And then the high pressure system that is over the Canadian prairies uh, on a Sunday night will build into the northern mid-Atlantic on Monday afternoon, Tuesday, and Wednesday with pretty much tranquil weather conditions and temperatures near normal. The air mass behind this storm is looking less and less impressive because the majority of the cold air is going to be locked up in Canada. That's because of our positive Arctic Oscillation, which basically means the polar vortex and all the cold air remains up in Canada where it belongs. The main impact from this storm, I think, is going to be the heavy rain, where one to two inches of rainfall can be expected throughout the region, with local amounts up to three inches possible in heavy downpours. Again, I don't think this is as much of a severe threat as what was suggested earlier on in the week. Now, by Wednesday night, our high pressure system that was over central Canada on Sunday night will move off the coast, and that means we're going to be under a southerly flow throughout uh, much of the beginning and middle parts of this week, of the next week, should I say. And that will produce temperatures near to slightly above normal throughout the uh, northern Mid-Atlantic. And then we have another area low pressure that's going to move towards the St. Lawrence River Valley towards 
Thursday night into Friday. That's going to produce another round of moderate to heavy rainfall. And then another shot of cooler air. Notice I didn't say colder. And I'll show you why. At 500 millibars at this same time period, notice our polar vortex all the way up in the Yukon and Northwest Territories. That basically means all of our Arctic air is stored up in Northern Canada and it's not coming down anytime soon. In fact, the Arctic and polar jet stream is nearly zonal over Canada, basically keeping all the cold air around the Hudson Bay and on north. And also, we have no blocking in the Atlantic, which means we're dealing with a very progressive, fast-moving pattern. So with our storm developing over the plains and quickly moving towards the east, basically what we can look for is a low pressure track towards the St. Lawrence River Valley, which is well north and west of the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area. And that means periods of moderate to heavy rain when these cold fronts move through, potentially a few thunderstorms. But the point is that the storms are fast moving. So there really won't be much of a potential for any major nor'easters or winter storms that some people might be talking about there's no threat of that whatsoever as we move forward into march and we can see at uh, 850 millibars ahead of this storm very warm moist air rushes out ahead of the cold front that means we warm up into the 50s possibly lower 60s by the middle and end of next week ahead of this cold front and as this cold front moves through the degree of cold arctic air that's associated with this cold front will decrease as the storm lifts north again because of the upper level pattern keeping the bulk of this cold air to the north and as this cold front moves moves to the east the air mass modifi modifies and that means that we end up with an air mass change that's basically we go from above normal to near normal and then we rebound quickly once again to above normal temperatures so really this pattern we're, we're stepping up to spring and uh, that means that as we move forward we'll get more heavy rain events transitioning more to severe events possibly by the end of this month thank you for trusting in nynjpa weather as your weather source for the northern atlantic i'm your meteorologist stephen d martino have an excellent day